Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will start discussing about multivariate linear regression and how we can apply gradient descent algorithm on the same. Okay. So first of all, what we mean by multivariate linear regression? So I have some tabular data here, as you all can see. You can see this is a classical example of linear regression wherein we are predicting the house price. Okay. So the features we have are size of the house in square feet, number of floors it has, number of bedrooms it has, number of bathrooms it has and there can be many more features. So I have mentioned it as x1, x2, x3, x4 up to xn. We can have up to n features. Okay. And the last column here is price of the house and that is denoted by y, letter y. Okay. So this price is now dependent on all of these features that is x1 size in square feet number of floors x2 number of bedrooms x3 number of bathroom x4 and likewise other features so now the we have now that we have more than one feature it is called as multivariate linear regression okay so how do we represent the examples and individual features in this multi dimensional data set okay let's see that so if you guys have watched my video on notations, this might be easy for you to understand. So I will just repeat it very quickly. So let us say I want to access first feature of first training example. Okay. So how I can, how I can access it? So I have my first training example. I can access first training example as x1, right? So if I say x one i will get this particular row correct so i will get this particular row this is my x1 correct it has 1000 square feet it has one floors with two bedrooms and two bathrooms the price is 50 lakhs okay so this is my x1 so within this if i want to access size of the house right so how i can do that so, in order to access the first feature, x1 of 1, this will give me size that is 1000 in this example. Okay. So, let us say if I want to access number of bedrooms, how I can do that? I can say x1 of 3 because third feature is our number of bedrooms. This will give us 2. Likewise, if I say x2 of 3, so, what will be the answer? X2 is this particular row, correct? Of 3 will give us this particular 2. Let us say I want to access this value here, 5. So, how I can denote it? I can say it as X5 because we are dealing with fifth example and the feature number is 3, correct? So, X5 of 3 will give us 5, this value, okay? So, this is how the notation works with respect to multiple or multivariate linear regression. So, now I have just mentioned it in general here x1, x2, x3, x4 up to xn we will have the features and this particular y which is our target variable correct. This is what we have to predict target. So, this y is now dependent on all these features. So, we have n features correct. In this case, I have not included x0 yet, okay, because this will be part of hypothesis, not part of data that we will be getting, okay. And x0 for all the training examples will always be equal to 1, okay. So, that will be introduced during hypothesis. So, how we can represent our hypothesis for multivariate linear regression? So, I have written it here. The multivariate linear regression hypothesis can get as simple as this. Also, if the data is more complicated and this particular price is not strictly linearly dependent on these features, we can have polynomial or quadratic equations. Okay. So, I will deal with that when I am explaining you about overfitting and underfitting. Okay. So, that will be the next part of the video. Now, think that we have this simple hypothesis here. Okay for multivariate linear regression which is theta 0 x 0 plus theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus theta 3 x 3 up to theta n x n. 
okay so this is how we will represent our simple hypothesis and this hypothesis will also be called as the predicted value denoted as y hat okay hope this is clear so now we have seen the hypothesis we have seen our cost function right this is our cost function correct so this cost function we have already seen while we were dealing with univariate linear regression this cost function will not differ this will remain as it is this is also called as mean squared error if you have seen my previous video you would have known this okay so this cost function will not be changed it is given by 1 by 2m summation over all the training examples from 1 to m the sum of the square of the difference between the predicted value and the actual value okay so this is how we, re we represent our cost function but the catch here is this particular theta will comprise of n thetas starting from theta 0 all the way it will go up to theta n so if we have n features the parameters will be n plus 1 why n plus 1 because we are introducing theta 0 right as a bias term it, it is also called as bias term or if you just can relate it to the equation of the straight line mx plus c this theta 0 will relate to this particular c okay just remember this if we have n features we will get n plus 1 learnable parameters okay so that's why we have from theta 0 to theta n right hope that is clear now what is our goal our goal is to minimize this cost function right this cost function here we have to minimize this particular cost function we have to minimize how we have to minimize we have to modify the values of the theta theta these thetas such that the difference between the predicted and the actual value will be almost equal to zero or the predicted value and the actual value will be as close as possible to each other okay that's how we have to minimize the theta so how we can do that for that we have our gradient descent algorithm right so we have already seen what is gradient descent gradient descent correct so this algorithm we have seen in my previous video so please go check it out if you have already not seen that so in order to use gradient descent we need to expand this particular cost function right so this is the predicted value and this is also will be derived from our hypothesis correct so whatever value this hypothesis gives us is called the predicted value and so we are replacing this y hat with this particular hypothesis below here in this equation so our goal is to minimize this j theta which stands for this particular equation in this equation i have expanded this y hat as like this okay so you see the notation here theta 0 x i of 0 plus theta 1 x i of 1 plus theta 2 x i of 2 so on and so forth up to theta n x i of n okay so this i starts from 1 and traverses through all the training examples till m example okay because the number of training examples we get in our training data set is denoted with respect uh, with help of m letter okay so that's the notation that we follow so this x i let's say if i is equal to 1 x 1 of 0 it means 0th feature of first training example x 1 of 1 will be first feature of first training example x 1 of 2 will be second feature of first training example x 1 of n will be nth feature of first training example and this y i is first actual value in this particular data set okay so if we just look at it y 1 will be 50 lakhs y2 will be 42 lakhs so on and so forth there will be y m values okay so in this case for your understanding you can add an ad additional feature here x0 and you can have values 1 associated with all the examples that you have here okay so in this way you will not have any confusion with this particular notation theta 0 x0 okay so that's how you can modify the data set that you have so now we have expanded our cost function all we have to do is we have to update our theta values using our gradient descent formula okay so guys hope you have, you have already seen my gradient descent form uh, video so 
this particular cos function whatever we have here is it is of this shape okay right this we call it as convex shape right and this is theta just assume for now for visualization purpose we have only one theta and we are plotting this cos function against that particular theta right so initially we would have randomly randomly initiated some values to particular theta let's say we have initiated at this particular point now at this particular point the cost is this much right so this is the cost correct now at this point we will find the slope of the line find slope this slope will be positive here correct now our gradient descent algorithm will subtract some negative value from this particular theta right so that is theta equal to theta minus alpha into some negative value correct sorry this is positive slope will be positive right so it will be add it will be minus of alpha into positive value so we are in turn subtracting some value from this particular theta okay so in this way this theta will move towards the left side so that we we start approaching towards global minimum in other way if we had initialized theta such that it falls at this particular location in the first step and at this particular point the slope if we calculate the slope it will be negative negative slope okay we will have negative slope here so in this case we will have our gradient descent update theta as theta minus alpha into some negative value so negative into negative it will be positive so we end up adding some value some positive value to this particular theta at this particular point so that in this case this theta will move towards right direction okay these all things i have explained clearly in the video wherein i have talked about gradient descent algorithm okay the video heading is also gradient descent algorithm please go and check it out so now now that we have this update in the form of gradient descent all we have to do is we have to find out this partial derivative formula so we know that this is our cost function right this is our cost function and this is the expanded version of it right so if we take partial derivative of this particular j theta with respect to theta 0 we end up multiplying an additional term here that is x 0 of i similarly if we are taking partial derivative with respect to theta 1 we will end up multiplying x i of 1 so likewise we go on multiplying an additional term with respect to the theta with which we are dealing with partial derivatives okay finally it will be x n with respect to the i example so that's what i have written it here so for j equal to 0 to n we have to update theta so how we can do that if you guys know about the uh, differentiation the resulting equation would be 1 by m if we differentiate this with respect to theta j okay the resulting equation would be 1 by m summation from i equal to 1 to m this whole thing i have shortened it and called it as y hat of i okay that's what i have denoted here minus y i this is predicted this is actual and i am multiplying with x i of j why because we are taking partial derivative with respect to this this particular theta okay so this is how we can apply gradient descent on multivariate linear regression so in order to sum up the algorithm it is like this so initially we will be randomly initializing all the thetas that we will have so how many thetas we will have if we have n features we will have n plus 1 parameters to learn when i say parameters those are thetas okay we have to learn that with the help of gradient descent algorithm that is the first step we have to initialize it randomly second step is we have to calculate our predicted value using this hypothesis okay this is our hypothesis and it will give us the predicted value once we have our predicted value we can plug that predicted value in this particular cost equation cost function to compute the overall cost right once we have the cost now we have all we have to do is we have to find the partial derivatives with respect to all the thetas on cost function j theta right so that's what i have written here 
for j small j starting from 0 to n i am updating theta j as theta j is equal to theta j minus alpha into d by d theta j of j theta this d here represents partial derivative okay now the catch here is just like in univariate linear regression we had used temporary variables right to update the theta simultaneously in multivariate linear regression multivariate linear regression also we have to make use of temp variables so temp 0 will be d by d theta 0 of j theta temp 1 will be d by d theta 0 of j theta sorry this is theta 1 like this we will have temp n equal to d by d theta n of j theta once we have calculated all the gradients these are also called as gradients okay so whatever partial derivatives you calculate are also known as gradients once we have calculated the gradients you can directly assign the values theta 0 is equal to temp 0 theta 1 is equal to temp 1 like this up to theta n is equal to temp n ok. So, hope you guys understood multivariate linear regression and how we can apply gradient descent algorithm to multivariate linear regression cost function ok. So, that is all for this video. In my next video, I will try to get in some data, simple data set so that I can implement live with all of you guys and show you how multivariate linear regression works ok. I will try to implement it from scratch in Python without using any libraries so that it will be a good homework for you, you guys also to learn Python. Okay. So that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions, please ask it in comment section. I will try to answer to you. So till next video, happy learning. Bye bye.